During the massive attacks on Ukraine, the Russian Federation is particularly brutally striking settlements that have large Jewish communities. The internet suspects that this may not be just a coincidence. The cities of Uman, Dnieper, Odessa and others, which have close ties with Jews, appear almost daily in military reports due to Russian strikes. The Russian Federation bombs these peaceful settlements with particular cruelty, which may not be a coincidence. This fact is actively discussed by supporters of the Iranian IRGC on the internet. According to Dialogua media outlet, Iranians are especially happy about the flights to Uman, a holy place for Jews. On its territory is the grave of the founder of Hasidism, Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav, which is visited annually by thousands of pilgrims. In public groups dedicated to the IRGC, they very actively talk about the fact that Moscow pays for missiles and kamikaze drones not only with its own resources, but also with strikes on Jewish places in Ukraine. Recall that recently information appeared about the arrival of a batch of short-range ballistic missiles from Iran to the Russian Federation. It is expected that the Russian armed forces will begin using them for strikes on Ukraine in the coming weeks. Today, Jews play a major role in repelling Russian aggression in Ukraine. A huge number of ethnic Jews are fighting in the Ukrainian defense forces, sacrificing their health and lives. Let us recall that yesterday, September the 12th, the funeral of the fallen defender of Ukraine, Matityahu Anton Samborsky, the son of the country's chief rabbi, Mosh Azman, took place. The inconsolable father made a statement in which he noted that the current war is a struggle between good and evil. Evil is limited. Its essence is to kill, destroy, annihilate. And good is infinite. It means to love, build, grow, help. I am sure that together we will dispel this evil and it will disappear, the rabbi declared. Israeli military journalist Sergei Ozlender also spoke out on Telegram. He emphasized the insignificance of Russian accusations against Ukraine. The son of the chief rabbi of Ukraine, Mosh Azman Anton, who served in the armed forces of Ukraine, died in the war that Russia started to denazify Ukraine. As it was said in the famous quote attributed to Churchill, the fascists of the future will call themselves anti-fascists. So, just to understand, Ukrainian Jews are dying fighting against Russian fascists who came to liberate them from the Nazism that they themselves invented. The journalist wrote, Indicative in this situation is the position of the Israeli authorities who, fearing to spoil relations with the Kremlin, ignore the threatening strengthening of cooperation between the Russian Federation and Iran, the growth of anti-Semitism in Russia and attacks on Jews in Ukraine. Ukraine's Deputy Defense Minister, Lieutenant General Ivan Havriliuk, has stated that the targets of ATACMS ballistic missiles include not only Russian military airfields, in an article for Interfax Ukraine, he noted that while discussions were underway with partners about lifting restrictions on the use of long-range weapons, the Russians moved their aircraft further inland beyond the range of ATACMS. This has led some in the West to doubt the effectiveness of their use. Havriliuk stressed that ATACMS can strike not only Russian military airfields, but also arsenals, bases and warehouses. Thus, the Russians would supply less weapons, ammunition and equipment to the front lines in Ukraine. Even the biggest and fiercest bears are afraid of fire. The rabid Russian bear will be stopped by the powerful fire of the defense forces of Ukraine. We need to add firepower. Many of our partners are aware that the scale of the Russian offensive requires a greater supply of weapons to the Ukrainians. At the same time, we urge our partners to urgently help speed up the development and increase the volume of production of missiles, long-range drones, robotic complexes, EW systems and other weapons at Ukrainian enterprises. And we also offer allies to buy weapons for the armed forces from Ukrainian manufacturers. A better armed Ukrainian army will quickly motivate Russia until the end of the war, he said. The answer to the question millions of Ukrainians ask, when will the war end? is simple. It will end when Russia can no longer continue it. This depends primarily on the Ukrainian soldiers and strong decisions from our allies. Ukraine has the right to defend itself, but we do not have enough weapons to repel the Kremlin's troops. Therefore, we are forced to remain on the defensive. That is why we emphasize the need for more resources, not just for defense. The Deputy Defense Minister emphasized. 
have really also noted that Kyiv is encouraging its allies to purchase weapons from armed forces of Ukraine from Ukrainian manufacturers. At the same time, we are urgently asking our partners to help speed up the development and increase the production of missiles, long-range drones, robotic systems, electronic warfare systems and other weapons at Ukrainian enterprises, he added.